Hi and welcome to another video in the series of the Procedural Planet Asset for Unity. In this video I'll speak more about the blueprints and how to use them and how to create new ones and how to modify them. In the previous videos we created our first planet, we talked a little bit about the manager and we modified a planet. So uh, let's go into the blueprints now in more depth. So if you highlight the manager in the hierarchy you can see the repository of blueprints here which was mentioned in the first video. I'll quickly recap that and basically you'll have whether it's a solid or a gas type of planet and at this point this is the alpha version so the gas planets are not implemented yet so we'll only have solid objects and we can only create solid planet blueprints. This one is grayed out for now. So in this table you have what type it is, what name of the blueprint is and then you have a number of shortcuts here. You can edit the blueprint, you can create a planet in the scene using this particular blueprint and you can set the probability of the blueprint and you can also delete the blueprint. The probability dictates when a planet is randomly created. It dictates how likely it is for a particular blueprint to be chosen by random. It's important to know here as well that if you create blueprints, you probably want to do that before you start making a bunch of random planets. When you add and modify blueprints, that will mean that planets that you've created using those blueprints will not have the same random values. So that's something to be aware of. If you rely on, on the seeded, only the seeded value for a planet to look in a certain way, when you start making changes here, it will change the appearance of those planets. So that's important to, to know. We want to create a new blueprint now. So we click on the Create Solid Planet Blueprint button. That'll create a new blueprint with a placeholder, unique name. All the names here need to be, or they must be, unique. So let's name this one My blueprint and then we can set how likely it is to be spawned on random creation and again these are in relation to one another so even if I set this one to max uh, it's in relation to all the other sliders so if you want to really have it to, at a high value you need to reduce other sliders in relation to it. Let's reset this again and then we can click on this shortcut key to edit it and by editing it basically it's just highlighting the object because the blueprints are child objects of the procedural manager. So by highlighting that you'll have a new custom inspector for this blueprint. At the very top there is a shortcut to create a planet using the blueprint. You can export blueprints to and from export and import from clipboard and that's maybe you want to back them up uh, so you can uh, copy and paste and, uh, and make duplicates that way so it's you know if you need to use it the feature is there. And you can also cre create a planetary ring to this blueprint. And uh, let's do that. So by doing that, it'll add another blueprint, a ring blueprint here, which allows you to customize uh, the ring. And you can also set how likely this blueprint is. If this blueprint is used, how likely is it that it will actually produce a ring for an instantiated planet? Following that, when you look at the blueprints, Basically all it is, it's all the same parameters or all the same properties that you have to when you configure or override them for a planet and when you customize planets. The difference here is that instead of having just a, a normal slider, these are so-called min-max sliders. So it's got a minimum value and a maximum value. And that means that when the random engine is picking values for a, a planet, it will look within these ranges. So if I don't change anything here, the random seed or the, the random seeded value for alienization slider, which is basically just a, the, the color shifting of a planet, it will look within this range. And at this point, it's set to zero and one, so it'll basically pick any value between this. If we wanted to reduce this and not have so much crazy colors going on on a planet, we can reduce the maximum value, maybe even to zero. That will force this one to always be set to zero. Maybe we want the continents to always be fairly large so we set the range up here to be large you drag and drag these handles at the, the beginning or the back or you can click on the middle to slide the whole thing as a little window and again maybe we want uh, on a terrestrial planet maybe we don't want totally uh, dried up planets so on a terrestrial planet we could uh, make sure that it's at least 50% water on it we can select the base color for the liquid or the water maybe dark blue maybe we want to allow some hue change so maybe some deviations the hue would affect this value basically changing it towards the green or towards the purple and this says how much is the hue saturation and brightness allowed to deviate when a random value is picked from this base color 
Maybe you also want to ensure that the liquid is always opaque or fully solid and never transparent. Then you would drag this one, the bottom one, min value up to 1, 1. That will force all planets to always have fully solid water and not have it transparent. Shallow distance, for example, maybe on a terrestrial planet, you always want these sharp coastlines. You don't want a large cross-faded uh, section that m might look good for other planets, but not for terrestrial ones. Then we would reduce the maximum value of the shallow distance, maybe all the way to zero as well. And that ensures that all the coastlines are always quite sharp so and, and not cross-faded. And same goes for basically all the parameters. It works on the same concept everywhere. You set a minimum allowed value and a maximum allowed value. And uh, I'll, I'll keep configuring this one a little bit just so you so we can see it in action afterwards and we will see the actual difference. Let's name it my alien blueprint. So maybe we do want to make sure this alien slider creates all sorts of crazy colors on it. Maybe we want the liquid to be in a purple and allow quite a lot of hue range for the purpleness. And let's keep the liquid on a high level, but let's allow this shallow distance that we disabled before. So we want the, it to be able to crossfade and make uh, nearly like gas-like. Let's have a look. So opacity, we want it transparent. We want it the shallow distance to be in the mid-range here somewhere. Maybe the atmosphere as well. We want to keep it a little purplish. Let's ensure that it all, always has a larger atmosphere with quite a lot of density and internal density on it as well. And the twilight zone, let's make that one pink. Clouds, let's make them... Should we make them... Let's stick with the theme and go blue. Purple, blue. And then this is important. To, most commonly, you probably want to reduce most of the tiling options. It's allowed, the maximum value is allowed high because if you do a real close up of a planet, so basically you're viewing it from close orbit or where it's taken up more than the whole screen, uh, then you can get away with having tiling which is up in the ranges of 20, 30, 40. But when a planet is seen like this, you don't want to have it that high because it'll look really repetitive. The clouds tiled 40 times around the planet, it looks really repetitive. So generally you want to keep these quite low, maybe at 2 to 5 or 6 or something like that. And that goes for most textures. As you can see, it doesn't change here in the view when we're making any of these changes. And that's because we're working on, on a blueprint now, not on this actual planet. So we're working on the, the template basically for planets. So there's no way really to see what we're doing. Uh, saying this, you, it's good for you if you want to create your own blueprints. I think I'd suggest the best thing to do is to go into a planet and then pull all the sliders and see. So what does clouds coverage look like at its maximum, for example? What does it look like at its minimum? And then you say, okay, maybe I want to have it between 0 0.3 and 0 0.6. And then you go back to the blueprint and you go to the clouds coverage and you set it to 0 0.3 and 0 0.6. So then you know that it's going to be within those ranges that you saw. And that's how you, you find out. That's how I created these blueprints. I Obviously, I know the, the parameters because I created them in the first place. But uh, it's all to do with testing and seeing, okay, it's within the top range and the bottom range. And then you, you customize the blueprints from that. So let's go back to R1 that we were working on. Maybe we want it to always have a little bit of lava, but not too much. You have to be careful with the lava slider. Um, that, that can create quite a lot, <laughs> a lot of lava. So let's set some of these. And for biomes, uh, anyone, wherever there is these uh, pop, drop down, uh, basically that will create a mask for the for the materials. So. Remember, the biomes are the surface materials. So in this case, it's uh, the forest and the desert. And for a blueprint, you can create a mask here. At the moment, it allows any material. And if we were to create a terrestrial planet, maybe we'd, we want to disable the dust. Maybe we want to disable uh, this iron oxide and maybe even ice. 
And that means that when it looks for random, it won't do it from the entire list. It'll do a random either desert, forest, rainforest, savanna, or tundra. And as I mentioned, I think in an earlier video as well, each planet consists of two biomes that are blended together and the liquid and the cloud layer. So the same goes for this one. If you disable some of the textures here, you, you likely want to be able to disable them here as well. So you don't get the dust, for example, or the oxide here, or the ice. If you want to ensure that uh, planets always have craters, for example, you have the, these different small, medium, large size craters. They exist on the biome textures. So if we always wanted to make sure that there were craters, you want to drag the minimum value up so that there's always going to be craters on it. Let's do this for the second biome as well. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to grab these handles. <laughs> so by doing this, we always ensure that there are craters. Another thing you might want to do then, if you want to definitely always see the craters as well, is that you could create or ensure that the craters bump map is always a minimum value of something quite high. And you can also have a colorization difference of the can the craters, and that's uh, craters diffuse here, for example. So you want to increase the minimum value of the diffuse. That'll make the craters standing out a little bit more as, well, as the rim of the crater will be colorized. And population, this one you should also be aware of, the, the glow one in particular. Uh, you might get excessive glow unless you reduce this one. And then as I mentioned before, all the tiling ones. Avoid having the maximum of those. So maybe tile 2 to 4 for the cities, the night lights. We also have the composition tiling. We probably want to reduce that one. So it's a minimum of 2, maximum of 5. Surface tiling. Surfaces are often the biome texture tiles, so the forest itself. That one you can get away with usually having a little bit higher tiling because it's the repetitiveness is broken up by the fact that you have liquid breaking it up and you also have uh, the blending of different biomes, so you get away with a lot more repetitiveness. So let's keep that one up to 20, but at least 5. And clouds ones we already changed the tiling on. So let's have a look what this one looks like. If I delete this planet that we created before, and then I highlight this blueprint again, there's two ways I can do it. Uh, I can either do it directly from the manager using this little C button here, which is create a planet, or I can do it from within the blueprint itself. If I click create planet here now, it will look within those ranges remember we kept it to a purple atmosphere and purple surfaces and we allow this alienization slider to be somewhere up in the top here so if we were to examine now all of these values should be within the ranges it forces it since we created a blueprint from the blueprint or sorry since we created a planet from the blueprint it forces an override uh, otherwise this value seeded value might have had a different blueprint to it but we're forcing by creating that using the create button we're forcing it to use this blueprint. So all the properties here now, remember we set a purple atmosphere and a purple uh, liquid. We set the planets or the clouds to be bluish. And um, again, if I do random here now, it'll use this blueprint to create random values, but then some look ugly <laughs> like this one. Some one looks less ugly and we kept lava enabled. So as you can see, you probably, um, at this point, we've got, we get a lot of planets that we don't like as well, that look really maybe too crazy. And if you get to that, then the best way to combat that is by scrolling down and going through, okay, which property is it that's causing this color, this colorization here, for example. And this is the twilight zone. And uh, if you remember it, we set the twilight color here quite strong. So if I try to reduce that one and say, okay, maybe I don't want it to. To be that strong so i pull it down the reason why it's green as well it's because it's it's blending between these colors and we have the alienization slider so sometimes it creates a bit odd effect if you have uh, color shifting on that's why it looks green instead of purple there but again uh, the point is that you know you see what 
parameter was it that's creating the, the crazy look that you didn't want and then when you find that one okay we want to reduce then we go back to the blueprint and we ensure that the twilight color is then not so strong we need it to be a lot darker here another thing we might uh, let's see if we create another random planet Maybe here we see that, okay, the craters are always sticking out way too much. Not in terms of the bump map, but the colorization is often too strong. And uh, that was the uh, color diffuse here. So the craters diffuse. We reduce that one. And we reduce the window for the uh, crater diffuse here. So if we create a new one now. Even if we copy and paste this value actually. Let's uh, do a random and then go back to that planet. As you can see now, the same rounded value as before, the craters are a lot more faint than they were before. So then that's because we reduced that window. So the max value and the min value for the crater diffuse color was lower. So there you have it. Uh, that's how you create and refine your blueprints and uh, you can keep adding blueprints but keep in mind uh, what I said in the beginning is that you probably want to create and have your blueprints in place before you start creating a billion planets because uh, as you make changes and as you make changes to the order of the blueprints that will impact the randomness so then you'd ha end up having to override all the parameters all the time if you if you break that uh, link to randomness so okay so that concludes the blueprints so in the next video i'll speak a little bit more about the the demo scene that that's included and uh, so i'll see you in that video if you want to keep on watching thanks a lot bye bye